Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar hosted by CauseVox. We are learning about AI in action implementation for real marketing results. I am so happy to have the folks at No Typical Moments join us today, and I'm going to be um, introdu introducing them soon. Um, but yeah, right now, I, I know we're at the top of the hour here, so we're probably waiting for some folks to join. So as you're joining, please feel free to um, chat us in. Uh, let us know your name, your organization, where you're calling in from or joining us uh, around the country or around the globe. Uh, and a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this webinar is being recorded. So you'll be getting the recording as well as the slide deck after. And uh, if you have any questions for Andrew and Chris and Chris, <laughs> Andrew and the team, uh, we will be inviting you to share your questions in the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen. That way um, we'll, we'll know exactly all the questions that won't get lost in the chat, um, just in case the chat runs long. All right, so yeah, we will get started in just a few minutes. Um, so I just want to welcome everyone again, give us a chance to get in settled. And so hello to Chloe in Athens, Greece. Wow. Welcome, welcome. Um, I, I really want to get to Greece too. Has anybody else been to Greece? I want to go. Um, hi, Terry. Awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to today's webinar hosted by Causevox. We are learning about AI implemented um, in your marketing techniques. So I will get us get us started soon. Um, so here we are. Um, grab something to eat, something to drink. I don't know where y'all are calling in from, but we're happy to have you here. Let us know where you're calling. Um, today, I am joined by Andrew Gottlieb, the founder and CEO at No Typical Moments, as well as Christian and Chris Paluta, who are fractional CMOs at No Typical Moments, and they will be um, sharing their expertise with uh, yeah, just AI in marketing. So no typical moments, they are the experts in growth marketing for purpose-driven companies. And they have so much experience uh, in this field of digital marketing. Um, so I am just thrilled to have them here with us. So thank you so much for being here and we'll get started with them shortly. But just for those who are new to CauseVox, I do wanna do just a brief introduction. So CauseVox is a digital fundraising platform. We're designed to make fundraising easy, right? For small, medium, even larger organizations, we offer donation forms, mobile payments, campaigns, ticketing, peer-to-peer, -peer, basically all of your digital fundraising under one roof for you. Uh, and we also provide hands-on support with real live people uh, and top-rated fundraising through education like the webinar today, also other guides and templates and courses that you can find on our blog. Um, but again, we, we will replace any old or outdated clunky software and just give you a new tidy approach um, so you can de-Frankenstein everything. In terms of donations, we do have the best in class donation forms because we've included all of today's best marketing technology and we offer so many mobile wallets. So donors have such a wide range of options to pay with. They can pay with Google and Apple Pay, Venmo, PayPal, ACH bank transfer, you name it, it's there. So it's really with the ACH bank transfer and any mobile wallet, really, it's really beneficial to um, for increasing recurring and pledge gifts. All of course, there's automated donation receipts and customizations. And then on top of that, you can run tickets simultaneously for any DIY or peer-to-peer -peer fundraising events. Um, it's really just an all-in-one hub, uh, one place to drive supporters for all of your fundraising techniques and initiatives. 
Um, so yeah, we have uh, we have our products available, and uh, I'd love to share with you more about how they can help your organization grow fundraising this year. So if you want to chat with me, you can schedule a demo. We do have pre-recorded demos as well as a live demo with me. So yeah, check out schedule a demo page on Causevox as well as our. Uh, our blog. This is where you can subscribe to receive our free resources that we send out every week. Um, so I will be dropping those in the chat later. But now I want to stop talking and um, invite our amazing speakers uh, to 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 welcome you and present. So thank you so much, Chris and Andrew and Chris. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to kick this off. I'm Andrew. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of No Typical Moments. And I wanted to start off and share why I believe it's so paramount to understand AI and prompting, which is going to be a really center point of our dialogue today. Uh, so my fiance is a chemical engineer, and she works at a large soap company in San Diego, California. So her being such a smart engineer, I'm always trying to impress her and try to explain to her what I do in digital, which most of the time goes right over her head. So once I started playing around with ChatGPT, I thought there was a really tangible way I could impress her and show off a little bit. So we logged into ChatGPT one night and I told her to give it a prompt. And I said, you know, tell it to write an 800 word story of the history of the origin story of your organization, which goes back to the 1850s. So she, she did that and it came back with this awesome story and she found a few things that were off, but for the most part, it was 100% accurate and she was really impressed. So I decided to take it up another level and I told her to enter some type of chemical science equation and see what JatGPT came up with and see if she would agree with it and how accurate it would be. So once again, she typed in some sciencey equation. It came back, and she was equally as impressed with, uh, you know, how accurate it was. There's a few things within there she thought she would question, but she thought it was pretty right on the money. Uh, in hindsight, I should have stopped while I was ahead, but I decided to take it up another notch. And so I told her to enter into Chat GPT, uh, tell me the positive impact Laura has in her last name has made at Enter Soap Company. Uh, and ChatGPT came back and said, Laura has made no significant impact at her company. Uh, and she obviously was very pissed off and angry with me and ChatGPT and has not decided to play around the platform since then. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'm really going to hand this over to the Chris's. They're going to lead this dialogue. And I think it's going to be really informative for everyone on here of not only how you can use ChatGPT, uh, but also how you can be doing design through mid-journey, uh, which the other Chris is going to be leading. So with that being said, uh, Chris D, do you want to take us off? Yes. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and yeah, you bring up an, an issue with, um, with chat, which we'll discuss a little later, is accuracy. Sometimes it's extremely accurate. Sometimes it can give you some bizarre results, right? Uh, we'll talk about that. But today... Um, what we'll be doing is, uh, what I am going to be presenting is using ChatGPT to create a drip email campaign. Um, there, we could easily have this be a full day seminar, but what we're gonna try to do that is uh, do this in 45 minutes or less, right? So we're gonna go fast, we'll just show you some examples. Many of you have already been using the system. So some of this may be uh, old hat for you already, um, but hopefully we have some unique uh, insights that we can provide that you can use today. So first of all, um, setting the stage, I'm just gonna, I just, we just picked a nonprofit to look at to build a drip email campaign for. We picked Charity Water because they're fairly well known. Uh, and what we're doing, what I am doing is I wanted to create a drip email campaign that might be sent to schools, whether it's principals or teachers, that is trying to um, engage them to, to, to get the students to launch a fundraiser, okay? So that's setting the stage. Now, how do, what do I, or how do I work with ChatGPT to build this? Number one, I wanna let you know that I'm using ChatGPT4, the paid version. Uh, it has more recent information and allows me to search um, Search the web. Now, GPT 3.5 allows you to search, but it allows you to search more recent data. 
Also, I am going to show you this uh, presentation on a PowerPoint rather than showing you live for two different reasons. Number one, you never know what's gonna get, what you're going to get when you uh, go live. But also, chat oftentimes will give you different results each time you ask it um, questions. So in order to control what I'm presenting to you, I'm just going to show you this in a PowerPoint presentation. OK, as I'm building this campaign, this drip email campaign, I define the task, I set the tone, and then I review and optimize. Very simple, right? So my prompt for the drip email campaign might be something as simple as I'm looking to create a uh, marketing copy to make my emails more engaging. I'm a marketer trying to get schools to have their students promote charity water as a fundraiser. The email would be sent to grade and middle school principals and teachers. Here's more about charity water. And then I give uh, chat a link over to the specific landing page that I wanted to pull information from. And then I ask it, recommend a se sequence of, in this case, I said three. It could be three, five, 10, whatever. Three emails, as, uh, three emails along with recommended subject lines. Then I go one step further and I say, write the emails in the Dan Kennedy copywriting style. So you remember here I said, define the task. So the task I said, here's who I'm promoting. Here's who I am. Here's what I want you to behave like. Here's who we're sending it to. And here's the promotion. So there's the task. The uh, tone or style, I just have one line. I say, write it in the Dan style, uh, Dan Kennedy copywriting st style. Okay. So um, it provides you the results. The results here follow Dan Kennedy's direct response style, which is designed to get you a response. I like that, especially when I have uh, promotions versus a blog. A blog is a different copywriting style. For example, I have a list, and I have a list right here in front of me, of uh, uh, people that I uh, enjoy their styles. So for direct response, it might be Ogilvy, or it might be Dan Kennedy. For blogs or other styles, I might say right in the style of Malcolm Gladwell or Steven Pinkert. You can even go one step further, and you can create what's called a marketing persona. You can say, I want to write in the style of Dan Kennedy and Malcolm Gladwell. Create that and call it my marketing persona A and write in marketing persona A. It's more advanced. We won't go through that today, but that is an option. There is also something else that you could do. You could also say, notice here, please rewrite in the tone and style found on the Charity Water website because it's the Dan Kennedy School of copywriting doesn't fit your tone and style, then ask it to write in your tone and style, and it will automatically do that. If you don't know what it believes your tone and style is, just ask it. What is the style and tone of the copy on Charity Water website? Since I've already given it the link prior and two chats up above, it will automatically give it. And you can see it's actually fairly accurate, right? Uh, it's characterized by an empathetic, compelling, and inspiring tone and combines storytelling, personal narratives, and a sense of urgency to convey the organization's mission and impact. So I can ask it, write it in the tone and style that you find on this website. You don't even have to tell the uh, you don't have to tell it it's tone and tone and style. It knows it. Okay. Um, again, we're going fast because I want you to get over to Chris, but um, uh, we have the full results of the, that drip campaign online, we'll send it over afterwards so you can read it all the way through and see what it looks like. Um, accuracy is something that's brought up all the time by every single company and every single individual that uses chat. Um, yes, chat hallucinates and provides you inaccurate or made up results. There are some things that you can do. Number one, you can ask it to check for accuracy. Does that work all the time? Mm, yeah, it can. Uh, we've seen it increase the accuracy. It doesn't mean it's foolproof. Um, Chris Paluta brought up to, to the point to me yesterday, there was a lawsuit uh, that was uh, presented and even the lawyer asked it for check to accuracy and there was still inaccurate data in there. There is something else that you can do. This is one that I read and I've been um, doing recently. 
I asked ChatGPT at the end of my prompt to take its time to provide accurate results. So instead of chat providing you answers in 30 seconds, it might take three minutes to give you an answer, the full marketing or result campaign, right? And it tends to be more accurate. However, nothing replaces having a human checking for accuracy. So these tools help, but don't rely on them. Um, the other part is um, sometimes the AI system sounds like a robot when you read it. There's a few things going on here. Number one is when you ask it to write in the tone and style, like I mentioned, if you say write it in the tone and style of Malcolm Gladwell or in Dan Kennedy, it's going to sound less like in a robot, number one. Number two, the more you use chat and the more you teach it, the less likely it's going to sound like a robot. Like it's because it, some people you can read it and you're like, I can tell this is written by AI, right? There are also humanization AI systems like Undetectable has one. You can see there's a button on, on here. It says, make this sound more human. You can take your copy, put it in there and ask it to be more human. One last thing, nothing replaces an actual human reading through it and making sure it sounds more human. So pre fruit and optimize. Uh, sometimes we have um, an external person other than the person running the chat, um, re-review and uh, edit and optimize because sometimes we're too close to it. Okay, um, additional thoughts for prompting. Tone, match your brand style guidelines. You can ask chat, what are your brand guidelines and what should, should, should your style and tone be? Uh, you can ask it to format it. You can provide it objectives or you can ask it for objectives. You can give it more background data. You can give it a paragraph if you want. You can ask it to optimize for uh, CE, uh, SEO. Uh, you can limit it. You can tell it, hey, this, these emails are too long. Cut it in half. You can provide it more detail about the target audience, or you can even ask it, what should the target audience be? You can ask it for various calls to action, which is also always important. And I always ask it to personalize the emails. Okay. Uh, you can ask it to write in a style or of a, a IATA, Awareness and its Desire act, Action Format. Uh, we internally at No Typical Moments have a Slack group and we share prompt ideas on a regular basis. Uh, and another hint, uh, sign up to the daily prompt by copy.ai. It has a slew of great ideas. Um, okay, that's it on my end. I'm gonna hand it over to Chris to talk about AI for ads. All right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, let's see. So should we go to the next slide, Chris? I'm going to talk about three different tools. So I think on the sign up, you saw ChatGPT4, MidJourney for the images. And then actually, I wanted to go one level deeper, which was to take the images and what ChatGPT4 created and put them together in a video. So I'll talk through those pretty high level. Um, usually what I do, similar to Chris, I have a very simple process I go through. I provide background and vision. I specify the voice I want to use. And then I have the campaign expand within that same uh, chat, within chat GPT. I don't have it do one part and then another part and then another part in separate prompts. I do it all within the same because Chris mentioned this earlier too. You want to train it. You want to train it what you like, what you don't like. Oftentimes telling it you don't like a particular idea is even more important than telling it you do like a particular idea. So with that in mind, let's take a look here. So what I did was I started out and I wanted to give it a little bit of information, not a lot. So I just said, I'm a direct marketer trying to come up with ad ideas for this company. I'm like, let's go broad scale and let's see what ideas it comes up with. I already had in my mind that um, I wanted to do something in the storytelling end because this is a charity. We're looking for donations. Often having that pull to the heartstrings is a good way to help inspire more donations. So I can see here in the threads, it went ahead and it gave me emotional storytelling as its number one option as well. So I'm like, all right, chat GPT and I, we are on the same page. Let's go from here. So and also there's a link there and it's got all the prompts I used, even the ones you won't see in this uh, presentation, if you're curious how I how I prompt it. 
And I really look at uh, chat as a partner in brainstorming. So that starting with the overview and then narrowing down can be really important. Okay, so the next step I do is, uh, like Chris said, he wanted to use Dan Kennedy style voice for the for the uh, drip campaign. For the ads here, what I'm not um, looking for direct response as much as really that evocative emotional connection. So I went a different route and I said, let's talk, let's have you write this from a great storytelling perspective. And it's going to be context Facebook retargeting ad for people who've already donated, trying to get them to donate again. That gives ChatGPT a little more information. And then I give them the link to the particular story that I'm looking at that I want them to build. So there's an article, a blog article about this woman, Helen. So that's going to be the motivation behind this. And then I want to give, I give them the CTA and then the voice of Donald, Donald Miller. So it gives me back, actually the first try on this one gave me back a phenomenal um, storyboard as well as prompts that I can use to create images for the story. It did have a couple of minor errors. For instance, it assumed Helen was a child and Helen's actually a mother with children. So I had to make a couple of little changes um, to then take this and go from here. In a little bit, we're going to talk about how I put this in mid-journey. But next, now that I've got that story for the ad, what I want to do is create the rest of the Facebook ad. So I ask for the headline and the body copy, and that I want in direct marketing style. So there's going to be a video, um, which is going to be storytelling, but everything surrounding that, I want to have get them to the point of donation. So um, again, this gave me some great body copy. I didn't love the headline at this point. So I, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change the headline a little bit. And then the one thing that I think is so, oh, that's okay, Chris, that's right. Go to the, the next slide, yeah. So one thing, um, and you can use this in the subject lines as well, is to add emojis to the copy. For, we see a huge increase in response in both subject line opens and in effectiveness of ads with emoji. I wanna say it's 48%, it's just under 50% uh, lift usually when you have them in your content. And that's because the eye, processes those images a lot faster than the words. So you're kind of grabbing the attention and starting to create that emotional connection with those emojis. And so ChatGPT will give you them. For instance, Chris, if he wants some for his, he can go and ask the same thing and it'll give them um, incorporated with the subject line. So you don't have to go and find them. It saves you a ton of time. Uh, since I didn't love the subject line that it gave me initially, I asked for using the principles of motivation to come up with five alternative headlines. So then it looked at these, the psychological components that compel somebody uh, to be motivated to act. It adds those in, and now I've got some subject lines I can really work with. So I loved that first one. I ended up using that one. So then um, for mid journey, what you do, this is, it's through discord, it's an app, the first 50 are free. And then you decide if you love it, like I do, I have a paid subscriptions to it. When you have a paid subscription to it, you own the copyright of any of the images that it creates. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to put in a particular prompt about what you want. I, I'm going to pull one that I got from chat GPT. And then you can set parameters, the different aspect ratios, the realism style, the vantage point. Do you want it close? Do you want it aerial? Do you want it um, far away? Any of those types of things. And then again, you review and optimize just like with ChatGPT. So what I did is I had one image of Helen, but I needed an image of her holding a pot carrying the water. That's part of what I wanted in that ad I was doing. So what I did is first I added the image in. You can see the that's the initial image. And then I got the URL for that image um, that's in Discord. And then I said, you know, carrying pails of water from a dirty river. And I wanted it realistic with an aspect ratio of 12 by nine. And then on the next slide, you can see, so they gave me an image that's very, it's close enough to what she looks like that I can use this image then in the creation of the video app. So now I had the images I need. Oh, another, there's some couple uh, of their prompting parameters. So that aspect ratio, it's dash dash space they are. Um, you always want the width and by the height. You can prompt for negative prompting. So for instance, if I wanted um, no animals in the background or no red, 
anything like that, you can use that no prompt for. If you're looking for something not realistic and you want a particular style, you can ask for Monet, you can ask for any of the artists um, that have any level of notoriety or fame they it recognizes. Um, Noling is a photography term if you want like the overhead shot and the different angles. So you can take a look through this. You're going to get this PowerPoint. You can use any of these if you need them. We'll go to the next one. Okay, so then this third tool, Lumen 5, which also has a free version and has a paid version, you go in to create your particular um, video. And what you can do is it gives you a storyboard section. So I popped two things into the storyboard section. One, I popped this URL up at the top and then I put the word in and then you click import and it takes that blog article. And what that did for me is it gave me access to all the images that were already in the blog. So I didn't have to upload them. Then what I did was I took um, and actually you can, I didn't, for this case, I didn't need uh, the AI that's in Lumen 5 to create the storyboard for me because I already liked the one that I did in ChatGPT. I actually think ChatGPT's AI does a better job of creating a storyboard. So then what I did above this is I popped in the ChatGPT storyboard and then I hit that convert to video button and then it gave me this video. We can take a quick look. I think it's only a minute. Oh, can you, oh, Chris, can you hit play or are you having? Can you I hear think... it? Can yeah. you hear it? No. One I second, I'm just gonna, I know how to fix that. One second. And. Oh, so you're, you're screen. Okay. Second. I am almost there. One second. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> okay. Quick. I mean, this process from chat GPT to having this video um, and even with the images created in mid journey was still only a half hour process. So you can see how this really speeds up the creation of the video. If we go to that next slide, you'll see, you'll see that I put it together then into an ad for Facebook. So on the left is the chat GPT copy, which if you had hit see more on that ad on the right is all the copy that you'll see. And so there's a static image and then there's that video as well. So it gives you some options for different types of ads if you are running those donate now ads. And then that is it to open it up for some questions. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, I was actually playing around with like trans, uh, was it converting text to video? Like mm -hmm. there, are a lot of, there are a lot of different platforms out there for yes. that. I think. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, if, if I'll, I'll, I'll ask my questions last. We'll go with um, our attendees' questions first. So Becky writes, is the image it created a real person? Where did it pull it from? So I fed that first image in. If let's see if I can pull up my see if I can share my screen and pull up mid journey so you guys can take it. And, and for everybody else, if you if you have questions, um, Elizabeth, if you have a question, um, uh, if you can put it into the Q and A panel, that'd be really helpful. Yeah. Um, just let us know your questions. And if if you, if possible for those in chat, if they could just tell us if they're using something like Midjourney for imagery, 
or not, I would love to, to know and understand. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is mid journey. So I fed in this image of Helen and then I asked for it to create a series of images of Helen. Um, <laughs> And so it gives me back different options. This one to me looked the most like Helen and it had the bucket. So I used this one and then I played around with some more. So that's the, the higher uh, resolution one of Helen. And yes. then I also wanted, um, I used some of these that had Helen, like this one actually looks like her. But they're, 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 um, they're altered versions of the original photo. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, so it's literally okay. creating something off of it. It's not pulling it from a different source online. No, I I could feed in um, if I had multiple images too. The more that I feed in as guides, the the closer it's going to look to what I'm suggesting. But it's a great way. Let's say you have an image of a site and you have an image of a child and you really needed it of those together, you could feed both of those in and there's a, a prompt called merge um, and you can put the two of them together. So it's just in a matter of seconds versus doing that from Photoshop would take you significantly more time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and Ferry just said, we're not using mid journey yet. We'd rather feed it real person photos. Which is fine too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, Kelly. There, uh, there may be situations where you don't want a person. Um, mm -hmm. You just want another image uh, in some way, shape or form. You can create text to image without uploading a photo, right? You can say, I just simply want an image of, you know, a soccer ball flying through the air, going through the net. Mm -hmm. And it could provide you that. I do and, have a uh, lot of B-roll images too. So for instance, I wanted like a desert scape where you could just feel that dryness and cracking um, because that wasn't an image that was on that blog page. And then that's a background for one of the little slides that's in that video. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Chris, it looks like you're going to uh, And sometimes the faces are still a little uh, disformed. It's gotten so much better with the latest release, but yeah, you definitely have to check it just like right. chat GPT. You need to check accuracy. Like on this one, it used to be terrible with hands. You'd have like six fingers or three fingers right. or yeah. hand would be facing like a way that was physically impossible. <laughs> so. Uh, I think there's been also always a lot of questions about rights to the images. Chris, do you want to talk about that quickly? Yeah. Yeah. So right now, how it, how it works is if you're doing the paid version of the image software, so far, I believe that's across all of them, like Dolly, Mid Journey, the, the ones out there, the paid version gives you the copyright to it. The free version, you don't own the copyright to it. So someone could use that image as well. However, if you're taking an image of an individual, um, and altering it, I mean, just ethically, <laughs> regardless of the law, no matter where you are in the world, you probably want to make sure that you're asking for permission, right, from that individual. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I see one on here. Success simplifying editing process for finer details, the color of one eye and the person and the pattern on the dress. So that, that actually, I would go into Adobe and Adobe has some AI tools now that you can do that within Adobe. Mid-Journey is more for add, like for a little bit more abstract, adding something in that just isn't there. But for just editing Adobe's AI that they've just released within um, Photoshop and within some of their other programs does some of that pretty easily and quickly. Uh, yes, on the press release. So for instance, if it's someone that you're using the image of, like Helen, that we have, if we're if we were going to use this for an actual um, campaign, then you'd have Helen's release. Um, I wouldn't I would never take an image of somebody that I didn't have access to a, a release for and use that as a as a base to create something in mid journey. 
Um, I don't I don't know if you saw Elizabeth's comment in the chat, um, but they provide photo credits. They're a visual arts agency. How how is that handled with this process? Uh, both with copy and with imagery, and this is kind of a new area you have to understand too. Uh, legality versus just doing what's right, um, too, because uh, there's no, there's the laws are not there for a lot of AI. Um, but I know uh, for many writers now are giving credit to chat when they're writing. And if they're getting photos from Mid Journey, they say that it's developed on Mid Journey um, just to be transparent for what you're doing. Uh, it's hard to do that in a Facebook ad per se. Uh, it's easier to do it in a blog post or on a web pages and other other locations. Yeah, it's so interesting all the legality around this. Uh... Yeah, and that's the reason why I always say we're out ahead of the law. So it's important for us as marketers and as owners of runners of organizations to just do the right thing too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there any um, particular reason why you're suggesting mid journey versus, you know, like oh. another graphic generator? Yeah, I, so I think I'm a little bit of an AI junkie. Like I love to try all the new AI things. I've been pitching AI for so long. So I've just tried quite, I'm sure I haven't tried all of them, but I've tried quite a few and for, for my writing style and for, for marketing in general, I find that mid journey works the best. Um, Chris and I were playing around. We were, we were taking Dali and mid journey and we were feeding it different prompts. And just, it, I think it was a hundred percent of the time what we got out of mid journey was better for our needs than what we got out of Dali. And the same, I've done that with a couple other ones. And I just found that for me, that works the best. But I think some things are personal preference. Like I have a particular writing style for my prompting and maybe somebody with a different type of writing style would get what they wanted out of Billy. But mm -hmm. I, uh, I pretty much get almost immediately exactly what is in my mind with the way I do the prompts when I type it into Mid Journey. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Thanks for sharing your insight on the, that. The new tools coming out are in the area of video. AI generation. Um, Chris showed you um, uh, Lumen 5, which is kind of like that video, but it's kind of like in a slide share kind of video. It does have videos and in, in, um, that it can add to it, but some of the uh, some of the new ones are you can type in a, a theme and it'll create a whole video for you. We've been playing around with many of those right now, and it's um, it's been a little bit of a challenge. They're not quite there yet. But I'm man, they're moving quickly. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon, we might be able to create full videos. Um, what I've seen is they're they're um, I don't know how to say this. They're ugly. <laughs> they're not pretty. <laughs> they're just not like they're just they're, it's just not there yet. But they're they're getting there. They're 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 probably in months. We'll be seeing some use there. I know. I get all excited because I hear of a new one, and I go over and I'm like. Oh there yet but I think you're right I think within a couple of months and I have seen the collaboration credits like created created in collaboration with Midjourney or created in collaboration with ChatGPT I've seen that a couple of times mostly on articles and it's kind of like they just add that as a credit like they just add it as text it's not incorporated in the graphic correct correct yeah what are your thoughts on like um real like a, an image of a real live person or photo image versus like animate animation or animaker as it relates to um like marketing uh results you know there's there's a thought for instagram and for facebook which is you need to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. So your stands out, right? So when it's all color images, then you want to go black and white. When it's all animated, you want to do real. So, because you want to, you want to stand out as a little bit different. So that changes over time. Um, it's funny because I personally don't enjoy 
animated images as much as I like real images. However, I noticed that that is true. Like I will, even I will do that. And whenever we've tested it, I'll be like, oh, this audience is definitely not going to be for animated. There was a client that had like a 65 plus audience. I'm like, oh, they're never going to go for the animated images, but done correctly that, you know, those AB split tests are done for a reason. It's, it's amazing how just being different from whatever is the trend right then is valuable. And then there's also in the, in the realm of nonprofits, especially if you're helping people, then having real people is probably important, but there is the possibility now for any marketer to combine real with animated. Right, you can have a real photo and superimpose animation, on, or not an animation, but an animated, cartoon-like character on top of that real photo. Now, where in years past that was very difficult, or you needed um, some sophisticated programs or somebody else to do that. Now, with some of these tools, you can get to that a little bit better. I'm not saying it's easy; still pretty difficult, but it's much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so fascinating. Um, yeah, any like uh, tips for somebody just getting oh, started? So something else is um, just think about um, when uh, using uh, both MidJourney and or chat as a brainstorming tool. You could see Chris kind of showing that a little bit too, but you can ask it, you know, is my is my call to action right on my homepage? What are five various alternative call to actions could I have? Or what other images could I have on my homepage? Or I'm building a new landing page that promotes blah, blah, blah. Um, what kind of imagery do you think would work best on the page? And it will give you ideas. Then you take those ideas and you can start putting it into mid journey, or you could take those ideas and start putting it in your emails. You know what I mean? So you can use it as a, a sounding board or a, a brainstorming tool. Um, you can even go so far as to ask it, what are the uh, marketing channels I should use to increase membership to my uh, uh, my website? And it will give you those ideas and then build upon them. Uh, I wanted to just answer your question as well, Jenna, which I heard is kind of what's a step one after this webinar. Step one is just going to open AI and start messing around. Um, anytime you normally go to Google for something, I would just say start getting in the habit of going to chat GPT and seeing what it gives you. Uh, that might be more for personal use. Uh, I was at a soccer game a few weeks ago and there were these little kids next to me who were messing around with it. Uh, and it was just hilarious what they were prompting it to. I mean, it was like eight-year-old boy humor. Um, but nevertheless, like they were, they're pretty funny of what they were doing with it. And I was talking with them about it. So, uh, it's just getting in there and literally just start messing around on open AI at the most basic level. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Yeah. Just kind of like exper experimentation a little bit, seeing what we get out of it. It's great too. If you're a brand, let's say you're a brand new nonprofit and you're looking for a logo or a web page design, anything like that. If you put that into mid journey, it will give you some great ideas for logos. It'll give you some like beautiful designs for a website. I mean, you still have to create things to work with that, but it's a great kind of wireframe guide for some of those pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will um, just put the OpenAI link in. I don't know if this is actually the I don't know. I think you guys can sort of get around to it with that link <laughs> um, if you haven't gotten there before. Um, but yeah, this is just a whole new world. I don't know. It's, it's uh, quite interesting. Um, yes. We have about 15 more minutes. I don't know if anybody on um, our attendees on here have any quick. Oh, thanks, Chris. Um, is any Anybody else has any other questions for um, for the no typical moments team they are they're here for you um and this is your yeah. best and you can always email us uh at any point in time we'll put our um email address in chat so if you have questions we're here to help uh, mm -hmm. also we kind of love this stuff so <laughs> that is true <laughs>
Yeah, so, um, yes, so it, is it is recorded. Yes, it is recorded. You'll have the video in the slide. Yeah, you will. Um, and then is it Mia? Um, the one Chris mentioned earlier, there's a um, Poppy AI sends out a daily prompt. And if you can go back and even look at any of the past prompts, I think that's one of the best prompting ones out there. And then we can follow up with a couple YouTube uh, things for prompting. Actually, I'm I'm totally partial, but like our internal AI group with all of the Z fractional CMOs, that's where I usually go for my, if I get stuck or I need some prompting stuff, I go in there because you're right, there's so much noise out there. I get that. I probably get invited to an AI webinar four times a day. There are uh, AI prompting um, plugins that you can add to chat. So this is called AI PRM. And what it does is it gives you uh, other people's prompts that have been built. Um, I have to set the filters. Oh, I have to look at public. So I can say I want marketing prompts. And here it gives you various other individuals that have created marketing prompts. So you can see what people are doing and how they're doing. Uh, you can even see the top most voted or top trended, top used uh, prompts. You can change it by to SEO. You can change it to productivity. And you can see other various prompts from other individuals and have it built right into to GPT as well. Awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to um, to share no typical moments uh, form just in case you wanted to get in touch with uh, Andrew and Chris and Chris. Um, Jenna, can I speak to that for just 30 sure. seconds? Yeah. I so no typical moments is a full service uh, digital marketing agency so we do a ton of stuff in the digital world but in particular that form is our uh, ai pilot program to apply so um, if you want to have a more in-depth conversation of what we could do to support your organization from what you saw today prompt engineering um, chris and i actually uh, have a phone call later today with someone who wants a software solution in the ai world um, would love to chat with anyone who would like to go in more detail with us. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, this has been so informative and um, thanks for the real, very practical examples that that you've shared. Um, I think, you know, the more I've, I've been hearing about it, it's just, you know, being specific with the prompting and um, being able to get the results you're looking for. Um, but yeah, I'm sure uh, everybody here would definitely benefit from just a one-on-one -on -one chat. Uh, with your techniques and everything. So yeah, I hope everyone takes advantage of the AI, uh, what'd you call it? Uh, AI pilot program. AI pilot program, right, yes. So definitely check that out, the AI pilot program. And um, in terms of CauseVox, if you are you know, a nonprofit here and you want uh, you know, better, better donation forms or peer-to-peer -peer ticketing, um, any type of fundraising solution, I'm just gonna, drop in the CauseVox links in case um, you're looking for more info there so you can book a demo here. Um, you can also subscribe to our resources here uh, on the blog. And then if you had any additional questions for me or our team, you can reach out to us at support at causevox.com. And it looks Chloe like I have one more question from Chloe. Um, oh, I love Read AI. <laughs> for that. The AI note taker. Read AI is awesome. It does, um, like if, if this meeting was on Read AI, it will give you a synopsis. It'll give you a full detailed thing. It'll tell you who talked. It'll tell you how engaged we were. Like it is, I love read.ai. Hmm. I have to take a look at that too. So interesting. All right. Yeah, thanks so much for that last question, Chloe. Um, I, I I have to take a look at all these resources now too. So <laughs> so, so interesting. Now I gotta look. Um, all right. Well, uh, we're wrapping up a little early, but that's okay. Get back to whatever you all were doing. Thank you again so much to Andrew and Chris and Chris for your time today and your expertise. And um, yeah, I hope to hear from you all soon. Talk to y'all later. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye.